I'm from Japan, where more than anywhere else in the world, people actually die from overwork. So many die, there's a word for it, karoshi, which means hard work death, which results from mixing long office hours and physical inactivity. My wife Anna's from Rio de Janeiro, where more than anywhere else in the world, people actually die from overpartying. So many die, there's a word for that, carnival, which results from mixing liquor and naked women. I consider Anna detail challenged, while she says that I need to stop being so meticulous, or she calls me an anal retentive, obsessive, compulsive, maniacally perfectionist control freak. I deny her characterization until she tells me about her first return visit back to Brazil in 15 years. She's strolling down the boardwalk of Copacabana Beach. She sees a 70-year-old man in Speedos walking toward her. She says, oh my gosh, his balls dropped so low they were down to his knees. I really wish she didn't tell me that because the first thing that happens is an image pops up into my head of my naked crouch and my balls are dragging on the floor. I really don't want that, so I decide to find a solution. I search all over the internet, but then I can't find anything. The internet out there must have figured out what I was looking for because it sends down to me an ad. It's a pop-up that I read with increasing excitement. The ad features Andrew Christian underwear, which not only provides genital support, they also have some really cool features. They have a snuggle pocket that lifts and presents your package to the front, adding up to one and a half inches to your frontal measurement, providing more package enhancement than any other underwear. Now, I'm not looking for frontal enhancement, but I figure if it supports my package, it'll prevent future genital sag, right? My under arrived by mail. They make me happier than I ever could have imagined. Then Anna tells me another story from her visit back to Brazil. She was shocked when all her relatives asked her in unison, why didn't you marry a blonde blue eyed boy? You went all the way to America and you married a Japanese? And don't they have small weenies? I already have an inferiority complex because her family, the Allen Cars, that's Anna's maiden name, Allen Carr. The Allen Cars are one of the most powerful and enduring dynasties of all Brazilian history. Her great grand uncle, Humberto de Allen Carr, in 1964 becomes the president of Brazil in a US supported military coup. Another relative, Jose de Allen Carr, is the most powerful civic and political leader in the mid 19th century and the father of Brazilian literature, as famous there as Mark Twain is here. So the Allen Cars are like Brazilian royalty, and that's all they know. That's why Anna's middle sister asks us, why don't we have a live-in maid so that Anna doesn't have to work so hard? And Anna's grandmother declares, we need to give our beautiful daughter surgery to correct her slanty eyes. Now, Anna's family is coming to visit us in a couple months. My logical side tells me to ignore their racist comments, but my emotional side burns up at their insults. I decide to prove to them once and for all that I am a man. When they arrive to the airport, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to wear my Andrew Christian underwear and I'm going to take Viagra. Then when I welcome them, I'm going to greet them and grind them. But that poses a problem for me because my parents have told me my whole life to never take medicine because medicine is itself a toxin that suppresses the discharge of my body's toxins like runny nose, coughing, pus, phlegm, vomit, and diarrhea. Americans view that stuff as disgusting. My parents love that stuff. When I projectile vomit, they tell me, Oh, your body purifying. You so lucky. Congratulations. To me, they sound like cheerleaders of orifice ejections. So I'm standing with my prescription in front of Walgreens. In my left ear, I hear my father telling me, don't take medicine. Don't take medicine. In my right ear, I hear my sister-in-law saying, 
Don't you have a small weenie? Don't you have a small weenie? I walk into that store. I will not be denied. I get my Viagra. My prescription is for three pills, which is perfect. One for the day my relatives arrive, one for the day they leave, and one for me to try out that night to make sure it works, right? The next morning, I find to my horror, the Viagra causes me to get gout, a disease which causes my foot to swell up the size of a melon. In Japanese, gout is called tsufu, which literally translates to wind pain because just the wind blowing against your foot causes extreme pain. I refuse to take any medicine, not even painkiller like Tylenol or aspirin. But then I think that's messed up because it's the medicine I took, Viagra, that gave me the gout in the first place. That conflict fills me with shame until I think about the events of the previous night that led to my gout, and I think, thank goodness for the purifying action of my evening-ending orifice ejection. I give up my greet em and grind em plan. I wanted to teach my in-laws a lesson about the man I really am. Instead, life taught me a lesson about not trying to be a man I'm really not.